Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name's Kayleen, I'm your host, and I am the independent yard dyer behind Little Bean Loves Yarn. Um, I have my own website, I'm on Instagram, I've been MIA, it's been a few months, but I'm okay with it. I'm trying to be okay with it and accepting of my own limitations. Um, but I hope you guys are doing well. It's been a while since I've checked in and said hi. And I, yeah, that's pretty much what I want to do today is just kind of catch you up on what's been happening since the summer. I think the last time I filmed was in July. I feel like it was July. I couldn't be sure because, you know, memories. So, uh, well, welcome back. Um, if you are not interested in a life update or where I've been and you want to skip to the crafting content and the things that I've been making, you can skip ahead. I'll put a timestamp here for you. But otherwise, I just wanted to give you an update on what's been going on because a lot of things have changed since the summer. I feel like this year has been a year of change for the better and a year of change in myself and trying to accept myself as who I am and, you know, all of those things. So to begin, over the summer, um, I had my birthday and... It was pretty good. I went out with a couple of friends. We went into Boston to watch a show called The Donkey Show. It was the last um, run of the show. It ended in September, but it is a disco musical themed um, interpretation of a Midsummer's Night, a Midsummer's Night Dream, a Midsummer's Night Dream, Midsummer's Night Dream. Yeah, I think that's how you say. Um, so it was super fun. It was really great to have a night to myself with friends that I haven't seen and spoken to in a while. Um, and yeah, so that was one thing that I had done this summer that was really positive for me and was something much needed. Um, the kids had a great summer. They finished up summer camp, both of them, and both started school this year. Cece is full-time in kindergarten, which is unbelievable. I can't believe she's already a kindergartner. And Tucker is now in nursery school um, at the same school that Cece attends, and he also attends a couple of days um, at another preschool slash daycare um, because I started a part-time job. So part of going through the whole depression and trying to come to terms with those things, being in therapy and kind of working through a lot of the issues that I've had since having kids and also since going through a really long, long bout of major depression. Uh, one of the things that I felt that I needed was a little time for me and a little time that was interacting with other adults. <laughs> um, I don't know how many of you guys who are watching are stay-at-home moms or have been stay-at-home moms or dads, um, but it is very isolating even if you do have resources and friends and people that you are with on a daily basis. Um, it can be very isolating and also in becoming a parent, <laughs> you can hear the kids outside, their neighbor's kids outside right now, oh my hair, um, squirrel. So, um, what was I saying? So some of the things that I've been working on in in coming to terms with me and how I've been since having kids is knowing my limitations and knowing the value in having in-person interaction with other, oh my gosh, <laughs> with other adult humans. Um pretty much on the daily. Uh, there's something for me, I wouldn't call myself a traditional extrovert in terms of my energy. I, I kind of go back and forth between like needing the isolation, being alone, having time for myself, like really being inward. But because of the last few years, I feel like the piece of me that really thrives when I'm around other people was gone and I was really 
kind of grieving the loss of that part of my personality and my in my whole life. I don't know, like there's just a very important part of me that thrives and gets energy and fulfillment in working with other people in a one-on-one setting, in in-person interactions, having conversations, talking to people. And my old job, before I had kids, I was managing a research lab um, in the greater Boston area. And that was very busy. It was very, you know, there was a lot of things to do, a lot of people to talk to. I was on the phone a lot. I was managing research fellows. I was helping the, the international department in getting new research fellows in from abroad. I was managing all the research studies in our lab. So it was a very high paced, fast paced environment, which I always love to work in. But then being a stay at home mom, Flipping the coin from being overwhelmed with work and taking care of a newborn when Cece was born to having, you know, a business at home, working at home, being at home all the time and having two young children. It's a very different place to be mentally. And I didn't realize how much it affected me until now, really, until this point in my life where now we're four years out from having had Tucker. We're not having any more kids. And now is the time for me to start changing again and kind of moving through this part of my life and saying, okay, we're not having more kids. I don't have to be home all the time. I don't have to work either. We're very, 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 very fortunate that Tyler's job does pay all of the bills that we need to pay. It pays for the kids' school or daycare. It pays for activities for them. You know, we're not left wanting in that area and that's something that I am very thankful for every single day for the last six years that I've been able to be at home but there's a part of me that was very sad and kind of mourning the loss of me me not not mom me not wife me but me independent of anybody else because I just felt like that part was kind of gone. And I I thought, you know, maybe I'm not that person anymore or I don't have those values anymore where I just don't have the love for, you know, being around people. Because I was so depressed for so long, it became my reality. So I started a job. I was very, 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 very nervous to start a job that was outside my house. It's in town, it's local to us, um, and I'm dealing with people one-to-one all day long, and it has been overwhelmingly positive, and surprisingly so, because I really did feel like I was going to feel when I left work after having had Cecilia where I was feeling overwhelmed and that I couldn't do what I needed to do in both realms, being a mom and also working a really high stress, high demand job. So I was extremely surprised and pleasantly so that I didn't feel that way. And I actually felt like me. (laughs) Again, as silly as that sounds, I just felt like that part of me wasn't gone and that now it's kind of back and it's kind of then validating not only you know for me outwardly you know having that contact with other people that I'm not just some troll who lives in a house and takes care of kids and I don't do anything else and I never leave and I'm just in this little cocoon Uh, but that I do still have social skills in a healthy way and I do I'm able to solve problems that aren't related to my own house and I'm able to work through things with other people in a collaborative setting those things that I felt like were gone or that I couldn't do anymore because I was a mom so I so I feel that kind of validation and then also The parts of my personality that don't get to shine as much at home as they do 
when I'm with other people have been coming back and the response that I've had from other people and how they interact with me has been kind of self-affirming that I am still me. I still have the same quirks and the same personality and how I interact with people, how I make friends, how I how I work in the outside world that's not just in this house is there still. And as much fun as filming here is, <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting here talking to a camera, to a microphone by myself in a quiet house alone, which is not the same as chatting with someone in person and having that feedback. So I do interact here in comments and I try to engage as much as I can in the knitting community online. But that, that something that I felt was missing has kind of been fulfilled over the summer, um, starting a new job. So that's kind of taken my time up a little bit and I've had to be okay with that. I've had to work through some self-esteem problems and guilt and, you know, having that part of me not push me down anymore where something didn't go the way I wanted to and on a normal day, it would be like, you're terrible, you suck, you're blah, blah, blah. You know, it's the depression that bubbles up and the lack of self-esteem that bubbles up. And so I've been able to kind of put brakes on that and, you know, really hone in on, no, what you're doing is okay. It's okay that you didn't meet a goal that you set for yourself because what has happened in the interim has been so much better. It's almost like the ultimate form of self-care, something that I've been missing for the last couple of years because of being a stay-at-home mom. So, so yeah, so in all of that, that's really where I've been. That's what I've been doing. I haven't posted much on Instagram since the summer. I haven't filmed any podcasts since the last podcast that I did. Um, and now that my work schedule is kind of settled, the kids' schedules are settled with school, you know, the whole beginning of the school year in September and into October has been a little bit of a a drier tumble, you know, everything's kind of shifting, changing, moving, like, oh, is it like this? Is it like this? Oh, Tucker schedule's like this. Now it's like this. Work is like this part-time, you know, working till one, working till three. Like, so there's been a lot of flux in the day-to-day -day for the last month and a half. And finally, I feel like we're in a position where here's the schedule. Here's what's happening. We kind of have a reasonable, reasonable knowledge of what to expect in the day-to-day. -day. So, Hence me taking today, Thursday, my day off with no children to film. So hello again. It's wonderful to see you. If you're still here with me, I'm very glad for it. And for those who have continued to support my channel in my absence, who have left comments, who have just recently discovered my channel, welcome. We have just hit... 4,000 subscribers here, which is an amazing milestone. It is something that I never thought I would reach on YouTube. Um, I really, I started this channel as a side project, as a pastime that I wasn't sure if I would continue. I think the first episode that I ever filmed of this podcast was Is This a Thing? Because I had just discovered the world of podcasting on YouTube and the knitting community at large and really coming into my own as a dyer and also a fiber artist in general and so it's kind of like a very strange feeling to hit 4,000 subscribers and especially in the last couple of years where my input has been very little um not by my own choosing so thank you to everybody who is here who has subscribed who has stuck around I really do appreciate you and I hope that you'll stick around for more because I don't plan to abandon this channel. I don't plan to abandon my dye business. You can see I have new colorways and things dyed up. Um, but just hang on with me, I hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> because 
life isn't always predictable and this podcast hasn't been predictable and I just I just feel very thankful and I feel happier and I feel I don't know <laughs> I don't even know what word to put to it but just very thankful so now that that's done and off of my chest <laughs> Um, let's get into some creative things that I've been working on. So uh, I've done some dyeing. As you can see behind me, I have some colorways that are up here. There's a lot of tonals in the shop right now. Uh, over the summer, just before, you know, during the last, um, podcast that I did and after my birthday, I had done some dyeing. I did some, um, work on the Racerback crop top by Jessie Maid. Uh, where is it? Where did you go, my pretty? First make I made in a few days, I stitched up this racer back um, crop top. I forget the official pattern name. <laughs> But I'll put it on the screen. Um, but it's made. It's it's a pattern by Jessie Bade. She's done the ripple, ripple bubble crop, ripple V top, ripple bralette, all of those things. If you've seen them on Instagram, so I made this crop top for me for my birthday, and I dyed up a rainbow of colors because that's what I wanted. Um, and um, yeah, so this project means a lot to me um, in a few ways, but it's a lot about coming to terms with my body and myself and making something that I wasn't entirely comfortable wearing, something that I thought I couldn't wear, that I shouldn't wear. Um, I haven't, I didn't have a chance to wear it I wanted to wear it to the donkey show when I went for my birthday, but I had only just finished it. I hadn't weaved in any ends. I hadn't blocked it. It didn't look nice. Um, I'll put up a picture of me wearing it. I did post it on Instagram. It was a big deal for me to post it on Instagram. Um, I don't think I would wear this on its own. Well, because the gauge I have is kind of see-through. Um, so I don't, I wouldn't be entirely comfortable wearing it just on its own with nothing under it, but certainly with a bralette or a tank underneath, I would feel comfortable wearing it. Um, I was comfortable wearing it with shorts and a tank top in the photo I posted. So here is the tank top. It is made, I made it with um, 10 gram mini skeins. So I dyed up a rainbow of mini skeins. So part of it was to use up the 10 gram mini skeins that I had sitting around in my room. Also, I dyed, and you can see back here, I believe, yeah, on that second shelf, those are lace weight skeins. So I had one rogue bag of lace weight yarn that I wanted to dye up, and I said to myself, why not just do one in each color? You'll have some of the tonal mini skeins and 50 gram skeins, so that's what I did. I dyed up some 50 gram skeins, 10 gram skeins, and the lace weight skeins, but all in these colors. So I have a bunch of tonals in the shop right now that are these colors. Um, this is a muted kind of retro red. It's like, um, I think I used the dye Oxblood, but I can't remember offhand the ratio that I used to mix it. I mixed it. Um, and then I have saffron, orange, Sunflower yellow, pistachio, I believe this is alpine, it's another dharma dye, this is uh, midnight blue, lilac, and mauve, or mauve, however you choose to say it, um, and then this color is soft tan, so it is a nice kind of, it's a true neutral, it might run a little warm on the warm end, so a little more yellow than pink in terms of color distribution, uh, but I used a single 50 gram skein of this and then 10 grams of each of these stripes. So I just knit 
I believe it was 10 rows. Eight, nine, 10. I did, I did, I knit 10 rows. <laughs> can I count? Yes, I can. Uh, 10 rows of each color, uh, 10 rows of ribbing, 10 rows of each color, and then I did a couple rows. I think it was a row. Yeah, it was a row of the tan before the bind off underneath the arms. Um, the only thing with this top, I wish I had knitted at a tighter gauge. I wish I had used a smaller needle because while it does fit me, the cut is very low under the arm, um, which is why I wouldn't be comfortable just wearing it as is, unless it was just me hanging around my house. But it's very low here under the arm, and also the length is longer than I thought it was going to be. So even though I measured, after I blocked it, it grew a little bit more than I thought it was going to. So that's the only regret that I have, that I wish I had blocked it. I wish I had knit it at a tighter gauge so that when I blocked it, it would have come out like just a little bit smaller because <laughs> it just feels like almost flimsy, like the fabric is not as dense as I would like it to be. So anyway, so this was a little bit of a soul filling project. Um, yeah, I struggle a lot with my body image and I struggle a lot with seeing myself for how I truly look and how I really am. Um, and that's been a long standing issue my whole life. But I've really kind of set myself to the task of feeling better about me as I am and not wishing I looked different or had a different shape or whatever. So this was that. That was this project. Um, then I also I also knit up this. This is for Cece. It's, it's still an unfinished object, but this is um, a scarf that I made for Cece for this winter. I knit it on my flatbed knitting machine because I had I didn't have enough time. I wanted to get this done uh, for her birthday, which I did. Um, and so I, the seaming is really terrible here. I'm not sure how much you can see it. I was in a rush when I was seaming it and I dropped some stitches and I was trying to seam it on the machine and I realized that I had dropped stitches on the edge. So one side came out na more narrow than the other and I didn't realize that I had done it, but it was at some of the joins where it was only like one or two stitch stitches that had dropped off and I hadn't realized. So so there's going to be some repair that has to happen to this scarf, but Cece loves bright colors. And these were, this is the My Favorite Highlighters mini skein set that I dyed up. I think I showed it in the last podcast, but I figured I would show this unfinished object um, because it really does showcase the colors. So... So you can see they are nice and vibrant and speckly with dark, dark blue, I think it is, or gray. I believe it's gray. And then there's also some kind of like orange and other colors that kind of make it tonal. The colors aren't just flat. So yeah, I had a lot of fun dyeing these and I think they look really pretty. I still have a few sets that are here in the shop. They're in the listing. Um, the color that I used for the tone, the, the accent color here um, is an oopsie scheme that I had of the colorway Luna, which has um, dark blue and yellow and pink, but there's not much pink that came out on this skein, so that's why it was an oopsie skein. I kind of pulled it aside and out of rotation for myself. So yeah, so this is an unfinished object. This will get finished before the really cold weather sets in. I just have to um, stitch over the seam, which I think I will do just with some crochet, and I will crochet around the edge to kind of keep it from rolling on itself. I'll block it out, and then she'll have a nice bright scarf for the winter time. Um, the last scarf that she has is also a rainbow scarf. Cece loves rainbows as much as I do, and um, it was a hand-spun scarf, so it's a little bit more scratchy than this, but I think, you know, knotted up. This would look really cute on her. 
and she could wear it whatever whatever way she chooses. If she likes the blue to face the front or the purple or the pink or the green, you know, it can be up to her. But yeah, so that's not done, but that will be done. Let's see, what else have I made? So this hat was, um, I made it for Tucker. This is a simple cabled beanie hat. I'll put the pattern here on the screen because I don't remember, but this was uh, made from hand spun that I made from fiber that was dyed by uh, Snurb Yarn and Fiber. Um, Brinchivia Boone, she is talented as all bleepity bleep. I love her. She's one of my most favorite dyers, and I just love how this came out. Um, I have more of this. I was going to knit Cece a beanie in this with the rest of the yarn because I think it used about 50 grams or so of my of my yarn that I made. I don't even know how to speak anymore. But um, I just she decided she wanted to have a dark blue beanie which isn't very exciting for me to knit, but this didn't take me very long. It only took me a couple of days uh, here and there to knit. The only thing I changed on the pattern um, is I didn't do a twisted rib. I don't really like knitting a twisted rib, and I know it's done so that it kind of like doesn't expand too much or flare out or flip, but I, I just don't like knitting it, so I didn't, and it didn't really matter in the finished product if it's Tucker very well. Uh, if I can find a picture of him wearing it, I'll put it up here, but, um, but yeah, so this was something that I made for him over the summer, and he's already worn it a few times, and he really likes it. It's his hat. He knows it's his hat. He's all about this hat life. Okay, next things, next things that I've made. Oh, I was knitting up, so I took a skein of this. This is my colorway Vanilla Bean. And it's a very subtle color, subtle colorway. It's got browns and warm yellow, and it's, you know, uh, understated is the right word for it. But when I dyed it up, I, was, I wasn't sure if I liked it or I didn't like it. And um, in terms of my own personal taste is what I mean. Uh, I like the color generally, but just for personal knitting and what if I would wear it what would I wear it as and would I make socks out of it would I make the kids something out of it so I took a skein for myself just to knit it up and to do some gauge swatches on my knitting machine and holy moly guys I love this color I hope that it is showing up as well as I think it is but you can see all the variations of yellow and brown in there and when you look at it from afar, it is just so nice. <laughs> like, it's so subtle. It's not loud. I, I like dyeing a lot of bright colors, but I also have a deep appreciation for a good neutral. And I think this is a really good neutral colorway. So I was knitting up gauge swatches. I was going to knit Cece a sweater out of this. I don't think that's going to happen this season because I can't overcommit myself and stretch myself too thin on knitting projects. But that is this. The last thing that I was working on in terms of oh, the last thing I was working on in terms of knitting was this sweater. So I started this sweater last year before I had um, before I started helping myself out of this depression and I was a little bit still in denial that I was depressed, but um so this sweater is the Georgetown it's the Georgetown Cardigan by Hannah Fettig. Fettig. And I'm knitting the mostly seamless version. So this is knit from the bottom up. And you break off for the sleeves. So I knit the armholes. I've seamed the top. This is, I believe, Kitchener closed. Yeah, I'm fairly certain I kitchenered this closed, or I did whatever three needle bind off they had me do. And then, so I've been working on the sleeve. So the last part of the sleeve that I knit, you can almost see it. Everything is crumpled up because it's been in the same bag since last year. But you can see like a lump where I had stopped knitting before and where I started knitting now. So my gauge has changed a little bit. So I'm going to have to remeasure and account for that. Um, in the pattern, but 
I've been kind of happy to pick it up again. I think it'll be a really nice and cozy sweater. Last year I had set myself the goal that I would finish it before the winter was over, which I, it was February. I think I said I wanted to finish this by February or March because I knew it wasn't going to be done by the end of the year. I still don't think this will be done by the end of the year, but I'm happy to have it out of my knitting bag and I've been knitting on it today and it's been a really nice change, change of pace. So this is what I've been knitting on. So I still have the other sleeve and then the button band to do and it will be done. So not too much. I mean, the bulk of the knitting is done. So I think I should be able to finish it at some point in my life. But I don't know if it'll be done this season, but I am working on that. Okay, and then other fiber things that I've been doing. So dyeing, I talked about these colors that I dyed, which are behind me here. Then I also dyed a couple of fall colorways, which are almost gone. So this is the fall colorways that I dyed. I dyed cozy sweaters. So this is an orange, a burnt orange and purple. And... Yeah, I dyed it on a whim. I thought I wanted to dye something that was really fall. So cozy sweaters. And then this is on a crisp morning. This is another kind of understated color. So there's pale green and pale orange and speckles of orange and brown, pale yellow. So it's a really nice understated color and I dyed them so that they would go together. So if you had a two color project, I really wanted to knit an Asheron hat uh, by Casual Fashion Queen. Um, Sheena, she released a pattern in, I think it was in this calendar year for a hat. It has a moth on it. It's called Asheron. Asheron. I don't know if I'm like, like the, there's a focus box around my face and I keep checking it and I keep thinking that my hair is sticking out like, anyway, shush stop hat so I thought this would make a nice Asheron hat because it's a nice contrast we have a really nice dark variegated speckled skein and then a lighter barely there speckled skein so I think these two would go nicely together in a project a two color project whether it's brioche or color work I think they would pop very nicely against one another. I don't have much of this left. I think I have just a few 50 gram skeins left of each color. I'd have to check the shop, but of course I didn't check before I started podcasting because, you know, podcasting 101 is don't be prepared. So <laughs> there's that. Um, but I had a lot of fun dyeing it and I was happy to have done a fall colorway because I hadn't dyed since the summer. So so it was nice to get back into the dye pot. I also had some requests for, it was a couple of uh, sock blank colors. And so I only had a few sock blanks left. And so what I did was I had dyed up single knit sock blanks for the, the customer who had requested um, colors and I had just enough double knit sock blanks left. So I had five single knit sock blanks on hand and five uh, double knit sock blanks on hand. And so what I did was dyed all of the colors on one of each. So one that went to her and then the double knit sock blanks I listed up in the shop. So we have, this is a killing curse. So my sock blank colors are technically one of a kind because of the way that they're dyed, I cannot make a really 100% replication of the colors because I normally don't keep notes on these. I have a general idea of the colors that I've used, but you know, th there's always that, you know, it's not exactly certain. Some of the colors I have like preliminary notes, but the way that they're dyed, they're kind of one of a kind. So since these are double knit, there are two identical 50 gram skeins of this color. So it's perfect for a pair of socks if you knit directly from the blank, or I can cake them up so that they are 250 gram balls, or I can put them in 250 gram skeins. It's however you would want it to be. I decided to just leave it. Focus, please. There we go. Uh, I decided to just leave it as it was as a blank and just let whoever wanted it decide how to have it. 
Um, this is Hedwig's final flight. So this one, it goes from like gray, light speckles through greens and then dark, dark blues. So here's Hedwig's final flight. Then we had Romanian Longhorn. So this is a more subtle gradient and it goes from these warm red and gold into green and then back into gold again. So it goes from light to dark to light in terms of like a gradient. And then we have bright bow and rainbow. <laughs> uh, I love rainbows and I love dyeing rainbows. Um, but I particularly love these colors. So here they are side by side. So we have rainbow, which is more traditional Roy G. Biv type colors. And then this is bright bow. So this is all fluorescent dyes, except I don't think this blue is technically fluorescent, but the pinks and purples are. So it starts from purple to pink to kind of an orange color into green, greenish yellow, and then blue. So bright bow and rainbow I also have available in the shop. You can have them as is, or if you wanted me to cake them up or skein them up, I could do that also. Not a problem at all. <sighs> okay, I forget how much talking there is in a podcast. Oh, my throat is dry. So let me see what time it is. It's almost time for me to go get Tucker. All right, so that's all of the fiber arts stuff that I've done. Um, I have done a couple of not fiber art related things. So I did put out a sticker. So I created a new sticker. So for those of you who remember my my profile picture, I think it still is my profile picture on Facebook for Little Bean Loves Yarn, but it's the emoting uh, yarn skeins. And so I took this photo, this is my photo, um, and I created a sticker out of it. I did a digital rendering of the, of the sticker, colored it, textured it, Da da da, and here it is. So I made up these little stickers from my drawing. So this, these were pictures, I forget the colorway. This might have been Fox Rising. I feel like it's Fox Rising, but it was one of the first colorways that I dyed and I had taken a photo of the skeins and then I used uh, photo editing in my phone and I put the emoji faces on it because I thought it was hilarious. And I'd never thought about making it into a sticker until, you know, this fall. And I was like, oh, this would make a really cute, a cute thing to have on your water bottle or on your notebook if you keep a knitting notebook or crocheting notebook. Um, yeah, I just thought it was really fun. So I have these available as well in the shop but I did this for my own fun. Like I put it in the shop because I can, because I have a cricket, I can cut them out, whatever. But I did this because for me, this is fun. So I have this on my notebook. Um, and then, so I've been doing some painting. I don't remember the last paintings I showed you that I had done, but I had made myself some notebooks for painting. Like these are hand, bound hand covered books that I made out of this is Arches watercolor paper cotton watercolor paper so I was kind of playing around with this this looks terrible but I was playing around with the colors um how to paint trees and foliage and watercolor because I don't have a lot of experience with watercolor and I really like the medium so this was another one that I did it's just a beach scene it was a YouTube video that somebody did a tutorial of and it wasn't from a reference that I had on hand, so it's kind of like, well, it's not so great. Um, and then I did this one, which I kind of think is better. I was trying to establish some perspective here so it didn't feel so flat. I feel like a lot of my watercolor paintings end up looking very flat and not dynamic enough. I overwork them because I overthink everything. So this was from a photo reference, and again, I was... I picked a photo that I thought had a really good perspective, so I was really trying to work on that. I wasn't trying to work on blending or color perfection, but I was really trying to 
make perspective. And then this is the last one that I did, and I just did this this week. This was from a photo reference as well, and I liked it because it was very dynamic in contrast and also in perspective. And so that's what I really liked about it. So like, as opposed to this one, this one had very saturated colors in the photo. And for me, it's hard for me to like take myself out of it. So then I did this one from a photo reference. Royal, you can find royalty free photos online. And so that's what I did. I took this and did an interpretation of the photo. So I like this a lot. So I've been working on that. And then I've also been doing some digital drawing because um, why not? So I had done, so I had done my, oops. So I had done my sticker. So I used Procreate to draw. So I had done my sticker. So that's like the big version of my sticker. Uh, it's so funny, I love it. Um, and so I really like the texture because I really I wanted to make the sticker like this guy look like oops he was grabbing his sides while he was laughing so like that's what I that's what I tried to do so I made these in Procreate and then I printed them on my Cricut and then I did some sketching uh, I have so I was really trying to have a fluid picture where it didn't feel so flat. Uh, where it was a little bit expressive, it wasn't so, like, here's my face. Um, it's not a self-portrait, obviously. Uh, I didn't do it from a reference photo, but it was a loose sketch, so I started with the very loose sketch, and then I kind of went from there. I think I can play. I think I can play this for you, actually, for those who are interested. Here it is. So here's the replay of the sketch. So it goes through a bunch of different phases where I like it, I don't like it, I'm flipping, I'm looking, I don't like the face, I like the face. So this took me, I don't know how long, not super long, but I was very unhappy with how the face was. And I was having trouble with the eyes, so I decided just to have her eyes closed. And then that's when it really kind of took shape, and I was like, oh yes, that's perfect. That's exactly how I wanted it. And then I tried doing some coloring, which I'm not very good at on the app, so I decided not to. <laughs> then I did some inking, and I'm like, I don't know if I like this. So then I took it out. <laughs> kind of uh, played around a lot with, with the painting aspect before I decided to just stop painting and then have it just be my drawing. So, yeah, it's still going. The painting is still going. I was like, hmm, should I just ink it in? And I was like, no, I'll just leave it as my sketch. So that's the end of the video, which is kind of funny. Um, I don't know if anybody cared to watch that, but that's kind of what I was working on. And then I made this sketch. So I have a lot of trouble with hands. Hands are hard for me. I think they're hard for a lot of people. So I just kind of held my hands in this. I had it at a weird angle, so it was kind of facing me. So the perspective is kind of weird. I don't like it. But, you know, it's just something that I was doing. It was relaxing for me. And they're not perfect. And that's what I have to be okay with. I have to be okay that, like, I'm not doing things perfectly the first time that I do it or when I'm first practicing it. Like, I'm not very good at digital painting. It takes me a long time to do things like that, like doing the sticker art and doing um, drawings on my iPad. It's tough. And so the things that I've had that I've made that I really like, like the stickers that I made that are in the shop, like the little yarn animal stickers and like this, this yarn faces sticker, like this is... This makes me happy. Like I was like, oh, well, this is this came out really perfect, perfect, perfect. It came out very nice. It was a lot of hard work, and I I wanted to share it with other people because I thought maybe they would like it too. So that really is it. I've just been trying to take care of myself, dye some yarn, not put pressure on myself, be authentic to 
to me and not do what I think I should do, not think what I think others, not do what I think others think I should do. You know, if I feel like drawing, I'm going to draw. If I feel like dyeing yarn, I'm going to dye yarn. If I feel like reading or writing or painting or whatever, then that's what I'm just going to do. So, um, that's kind of worked for me for a little while now, and I think I will continue doing that. I have ideas I wanted to do. I did want to do a Halloween advent, which I never got around to, but again, the summer being so chaotic, I have to just let that go and say, it's okay, that didn't happen. You can just do it next year. Um, I did get invited uh, by JP Knit and Stitch, which is a yarn shop in Jamaica Plain, to potentially do a trunk show there for in the winter or spring they were looking for some vendors and they asked if I would like to do it and I definitely would and I think I'm in a much better place now than I was last year at this time when I was going to be doing a trunk show uh the one that I did for Plymouth Yarn uh Plymouth Plymouth Harbor Knits sorry not Plymouth Yarn Plymouth Harbor Knits which is in Plymouth Mass um, at least mentally for me to be able to handle the stressors well and to handle the level of work that's going to be required of me. So it's not final or anything. They just sent me an email yesterday. So I'm looking into it and hopefully we'll be able to do it. And if I can, I will definitely give the information here so that if any of you are local to me, you can come see me. Um, but yeah, still preliminary, still planning, not final, but hoping, hoping that it all works out and that I'll be able to do it. Yeah, and then so for this channel, I'm just going to work at it when I'm feeling good and bring you creative things that I've done when I can and try and post Instagram when I can. And you guys are always welcome to message me. Um, best place to message me would either be by email or through my website or you can email or message me through Instagram because I do check DMs on Instagram. I don't get many. Um, yeah, and 4,000 subscribers here. It's amazing. It's something that I never thought would happen. So, anyway, I have to sign off now because I've been <laughs> jabbering away for so long that now I have to go pick up Tucker at school. So, um, yeah, so I will see you guys soon. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your month. Happy Halloween to those who celebrate Halloween. Uh, and happy fall to those who love fall. I love fall. Oh, it's just my season. I just love this season so much. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.